I think um, the shares of immediate implants or immediacy have uh, increased over the years because it's so attractive to patients. Especially now when we're dealing with uh, cohorts of patients who come in to see us with teeth um, and then want to leave with teeth. In the old days when they were edentulous already, it didn't really make uh, so much difference to them. But younger people wanting treatment, they wanting things happening straight away, I think there's great advantages uh, for uh, an immediate approach. The concept is not a new one though. It's only that in recent times we've found greater greater interest in relation to carrying out these procedures and much more interest from our patients. I think for the patients is uh, aesthetics number one. So if you're losing a, a front tooth for example or several front teeth and I think they want something to go back in straight away um, so that they one they can function and smile and speak normally without having to wear a removable type prosthesis. So I think very much driven by the aesthetics of the patient and the requirements of the patient. I think it depends on the situation. Let's take a single tooth replacement for example. So if it's a single tooth replacement and when an implant is being proposed as the replacement option, then things have to be pretty ideal. You need to have a healthy site, you need to have intact bone walls, you need to be able to have enough bone to be able to place the implant and achieve stability. And then you need to have a very good team surrounding you to be able to deliver that provisional restoration so that uh, it fits nicely and looks good at the same time. So there are a lot of things that have to come together to work in order to provide this. And that's why I think planning becomes quite a critical part of the whole process. I think there are some challenges. In the traditional specialist surgeon, restorative dentist relationship, then I think it, provi it provides some challenges because the surgeon has to liaise closely with the restorative dentist and the technician to provide this. If you're in a practice where you would traditionally provide all these steps yourself, then of course it's not such a, a difficult uh, challenge for you. But it does challenge some of the older practitioners who, have, who are working in a completely different environment. And think about a hospital environment, for example, general anaesthetic, a theatre environment, where sterility is really important, and suddenly you want to introduce non-sterile products and materials for impressions and so on. It becomes quite a, quite a challenge in those situations. The challenges which can be overcome, but nevertheless a lot more planning and thought has to go into it. Yeah, but it's not just immediacy. Not many dentists are taught about implants generally, you see. And sometimes the first thing they are, they are exposed to is the concept of immediacy, which sometimes is the, not the correct way of going about it. We need to start with the basics and then and move through that. But if someone's interested in, uh, in looking at uh, immediate protocols in their practice, then the best advice I can give them is to have them partner with one, good mentors who can provide them with uh, advice and guidance in terms of the treatment. They have to partner with a, a good uh, implant company, one that has the techniques, the materials and the biomaterials that can provide that treatment. Uh, and thirdly, to partner with a, a good laboratory. So partnerships are, are very important and interpersonal relationships with the people around you. I think they work fantastically well because the one unknown uh, with implant dentistry in the past was what was the bone like when you opened up a flap? You never really quite knew and the older, digit uh, sorry, the older imaging techniques, the plain film tomograms for example were very inaccurate. We had uh, multi-sliced medical CTs which, which really did not produce images that were terribly conducive for implant planning and often had projection issues. But with the advent of cone beam CT as a technology, and not only that, but it's now so widespread and easily available, also in dental offices, which now makes that a much more accessible imaging. And that's a digital technology, but that allows us to see inside the soft tissues to the bone, to be able to plan the placement, to determine whether an implant is possible or not, whether we can get good stability or not. So it takes away a lot of those uncertainties before we plan treatment. Because we used to have a plan, but we weren't so sure whether the plan could be executed. I think the difference today is that we are far more confident that the plan can be executed uh, and the endpoint achieved, irrespective of what that endpoint is, but we can achieve whatever that endpoint might be. And it could well be a provisional restoration uh, on a tooth.
Yeah, I think so. I think uh, digital technologies has improved, uh, one, our access to it, and two, our ability to provide that treatment with a greater degree of, of uh, predictability. So in a practice, failures are not good promoting of, uh, of, uh, of, of uh, treatments and in business in your practice. They are actually negative drivers. So we always like to look for protocols that are successful. And if you can have, in immediacy for example, if you can have the information, the digital technologies that allow you to deliver that in a predictable way, of course that's going to be a practice builder for you.